All right, here we go. Welcome to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Sunday, March 27th, 2022, and we are live. The call in number is 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you, are, uh, if you have a question or comment. And we're talking about the shutting down of the Black News Channel. I was on Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday. March 25th, Roland deconstructed what happened. I was on his panel. I talked about it as well. I posted about the, the uh, shutting down of the Black News Channel before I was on his show. I'm on his show uh, Fridays, uh, 6 p.m. And uh, there was a big article from the L.A. Times uh, that talked about uh, uh, the Black News Channel shutting down. Now, we know the principal investor the, the majority investor was Shahid Khan, who's a Pakistani American. Shahid Khan is the owner of the Baltimore Ravens as well. So it, it, uh, the Black News Channel was the brainchild of uh, former uh, Republican uh, Congressman J.C. Watts. He's an African American. He's been trying to do the Black News Channel uh, for about a decade now. And uh, when Shahid Khan came in and invested $50 million, he became the majority stakeholder. So it went from uh, black owned to uh, black targeted. OK, uh, Shahid Khan had the majority uh, stake in the black news channel. There was a big article from um, um, L.A. Times, Shahid Khan's black news channel shutting down. Now, before that came out and um, uh, Taylor, we're going to clip number one, just a second. So cue that up from Roland Martin Unfiltered. So before that uh, article from. Uh, LA Times came out. There was a uh, email that went out to the staff of the Black News Channel. And this was about their March 25th uh, payroll deposit. Roland Martin posted this on his Facebook page. I shared it on, on my Facebook page as well. This talked about uh, the March 25th payroll deposit. It says BNC staff the March 25th payroll deposit, which, which would have been Friday, will be delayed. We sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. We, we sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. Um, we are actively, we are actively working to resolve this matter quickly and we'll advise you with an update as soon as possible. We'll advise you with an update as soon as possible. Thank you for understanding. So that went out, uh, that was about their uh, March 25th payroll deposit. I think that went out, was that, uh, I can't see, I can't see whether that was early, okay, that was Friday, March 25th, it looks like that went out, about their March 25th payroll deposit. So then you have uh, the article that came out from uh the la times on uh friday morning okay pacific uh, standard time so that would have been about 12 57 p.m eastern standard time and i'm going to pull this up here from uh the la times i posted this also uh on our facebook fan page the african history network the african history network so if you follow me there, uh, you, you saw this article. Shahid Khan's Black News Channel is shutting down. OK. And in this piece, in this article here, and let me uh, pull this up here. OK. So in this article, it talks about uh, the Black News Channel, the TV news uh, service that launched in early 2020. They launched in February 2020. So they just celebrated their two year anniversary. Uh, launched in early 2020 to be a voice for people of color is ceasing operations Friday afternoon, ceasing operations Friday afternoon. A memo to employees from BNC's uh, chief executive, Prince Sale Hare, confirmed the Times earlier report, the LA Times earlier report of the closure uh, of the closure plans. The company is filing bankruptcy and live programming will end at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daytime, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, on Friday. Uh, the channel will air repeats for the rest of the month. OK, the channel will air repeats for the rest of the month. Now, the Tallahassee, Florida based outlet whose majority stakeholder 
is Jacksonville Jaguars owner Shahid Khan failed to meet payroll on Friday, a day after telling employees that paychecks would be delayed. OK, so I think the memo went out Thursday, letting them know that paychecks would be delayed. All right. Now, back in uh, late uh, 2021, late 2021, there was an article that I read about the Black News Channel. Now, I, I remember when it was supposed to launch in uh i, I remember when jc watched talking about it in 2019 and the, it was delayed the launches were delayed and the filing launched in february 2020 okay so i remember when it initially launched i remember when the launch got pushed back things like this there was an article um in late 2021 that talked about the um the ratings of the black news channel and it said uh, something to the effect out of 124 uh, cable stations, the Black News Channel was second from the last in ratings. Out of about 124 cable stations, the Black News Channel was second from the last in ratings. Now, I liked a lot of their content. I watched news. I watched MSNBC usually all day. MSNBC. Um, I watch news. Watch. Uh, local news, cable news. Uh, I monitor about 35 different news sources on a daily basis. The information that the Black News Channel had was very unique. Okay, the the new the news coverage they had, the stories that they covered, was uh, was very unique, and you did not find they covered a lot of topics pertaining to African Americans that you did not find on MSNBC, CNN other cable news sources or a lot of news sources in general okay so this is the piece from um uh, la times we posted this on our facebook fan page the african history network when we come back from the break um i know we're coming up on the break i'm gonna let you hear part of roland martin and the filter from friday and i was on the show you're going to hear uh from me uh also and i'll make some more comments as well so you know this is now their content is still on their YouTube channel, BNC. I share some of the content here on this show. They they covered some really good topics, and also see Dr. Uh, Dr. Mark Lamont Hill, whose show was on uh, 8 p.m. on Friday, uh, on Monday through Friday, uh, Black News Tonight. He would cover news from the African diaspora, also. Okay, so you got that while your Ukrainian TV is on almost 24 seven, which, which that's what I call MSNBC now ukrainian tv because that's basically what they cover 90 percent of the time what's going on in ukraine you listen to the african history network show right here on 9 10 a.m superstation the future radio i'm your host but like lem hotel we'll be back in a few minutes the work that i do is larger than the fashion industry it's larger than the art world and i believe that i was born to bring newness into this world I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Sunday. March 27th, 2022, uh, and we are live. I was talking to the people on Facebook and YouTube during the break who are watching us. Now, we're broadcasting on uh, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation's uh, Facebook page, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation on Facebook, also on my social media platforms, The African History Network on, on Facebook, The African History Network, and my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about, so on today's show, once again, we're going to deal with the uh B the black news channel is shutting down black news channel um uh, was see one of the problems is the black news channel is in 250 million homes right but they averaged 4000 viewers per hour 
on the black news channel and then it went up to about 10,000 viewers per hour so they had some they had some real problems here but one it was a good effort two they had some fantastic content i'm somebody i monitor about 35 different news sources on a daily basis you look at my facebook posts okay you look at the content we have on this show all right they have some phenomenal content on the black news they had some phenomenal content on the black news channel the amount of african american experts they brought on attorneys political strategists doctors scientists things like this the only place you find something like that basically is is a uh, roland martin unfiltered all right i, I want to go back to this uh article briefly from uh the la times and then there was a, then there was an article from tallahassee.com that published a letter that Prince L. Hare um, sent to uh, email to staff on uh, Friday, March 25th, 2.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Prince L. Hare uh, was the CEO of the uh, Black News Channel, Ta the Tallahassee-based Black News Channel. And when I posted about this on our Facebook page, I got a number of people saying they never heard of the Black News Channel, okay? Now they they did you know the black news channel at least here in Detroit I don't know about across the country but at least here in Detroit they didn't have billboards things like this I knew about it because I I'm in media so I read this stuff and I know some of the people who are panelists on there okay so um, I I knew about it before it even launched but I was just I was just astounded by the number of people. Who said they never heard the black news channel and they said hey they would have watched it if they had known about it okay this was, this was one of the problems they had a they had a problem one of the problems was their marketing strategy all right 313-778-7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment 313-778-7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment okay so i want to go back to this article briefly then we're going to go to this clip um uh taylor almost called you shakita taylor from <laughs> the black news channel all right so uh shaheed khan who is the owner of the baltimore ravens nfl team he's the principal investor he invested uh 50 million dollars jc watts was going to different investors to try to get them to invest he couldn't get the type of money that he needed until uh shaheed khan came in and invested 50 million dollars so shaheed khan became the majority investor the, the so this announcement means uh that bnc staff of 230 uh a vast majority of whom are people of color or out of work they have been told benefits will last through next week and there will be no severance uh pay according to one person briefed on the plans now that may be updated the LA Times hasn't updated it. That that may change. Don't know if it does change. We'll update you on our shows this week. Now, Shahid Khan was no longer willing to invest uh, further, according to people briefed on the matter. The channel has been shopped to a number of media companies, including Byron Allen's Entertainment Studios, but there were no takers. The company endured. Uh, the company endured several rounds of layoffs in recent months. So I read about the layoffs. I knew something like this was going to happen. The, and, and see, the other thing that uh, caused me to realize something was really going on is uh, they had a campaign celebrating their two-year anniversary. And they were asking people, when you watch the Black News Channel, and like I said, I watch them every day. They had a campaign and they were asking viewers to watch two shows at least 15 minutes a day and to post on social media about it. Well, when I hear that, watch two 15 minutes a day, I know they're trying to increase their ratings. So so the, the AC Nielsen ratings, they're trying to increase the AC Nielsen ratings need to watch 15 minutes. So I understand that. I ain't mad. At, I'm not mad at them for that. I, I understand that. But that follows the article that I saw late in 2021 that talked about how out of about 124 cable stations, they were second from last as far as ratings, all right? So, and let me just say this, having an African-American news channel is really hard because so many of our people want entertainment. It's really hard. So many people I want, so, I mean, if you had, if you had a black housewives 
24 hour ch ch channel oh you get big ratings if you had a if you had like a love and hip hop uh 24 hour channel or something like that you get ready so, so many of our people want that want conflict mess gossip nonsense okay but when you have a black news channel it's hard to get top advertisers if you have singing and dancing if you have comedy you can get the new you can get the advertisers much better i know that i know this from having so having been in radio sales 20 years ago here in detroit it, it won the it won the top um r b music stations here in detroit and it was hard to get after it, 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 even then it was hard to get a lot of the top advertisers because in radio uh in in media in general but also in radio you had what was known back in the late 90s you had what was known called uh no urban dictate look this up no urban dictate i learned about this being in radio sales okay and, and Tom Jordan talked about this. This went national. No urban dictate. What no urban dictate meant was that the corporations, these white owned corporations said, we don't need to advertise in African-American owned or African-American targeted media. We can advertise in mainstream media and get African-American listeners. So we don't have to spend money with African-American owned or targeted media because you all are going to listen to uh the white owned white owned stations watch white owned stations on tv things like this and we can get african-american viewers that way and what this does is this prevents a lot of african-american owned especially but also targeted media companies from being able to grow they can't get the top advertisers or if if they can get top advertisers, they really want to undercut them on when it comes to uh, uh, how much they're paying for the, the ads. When I was on the Empowerment Radio Network with Dave Anderson, we had Dave Anderson, Bev Smith, Warren Ballantyne. We had, uh, um, who else was on there? Um, uh, Rashad, Richie, things like this. It was hard to get. This was nationally syndicated radio, nationally syndicated radio back in 20. 15 2016 i was on the palmer radio network it was hard to get top advertisers because we weren't doing comedy we weren't playing music we, we were we were dropping knowledge we, we were 24 hour um talk radio but it was empowerment radio it wasn't the negro radio station we had professor griff on at one point we had roland martin when when warren ballantyne left the the the, the attorney my frat brother warren ballantyne when warren ballantyne left uh, uh roland martin came it was hard to get top advertisers for that because we weren't doing singing and dancing shucking and jiving so this is this is the game that we have to play and it's hard to get african-american owned businesses to advertise because a lot of them a lot to, to, to the amount of money in, in having sold radio ads to african-american owned businesses here in detroit 20 years ago a lot of them don't make enough money to be able to advertise on a lot of radio stations. I'm not gonna call any other station names, but they're still around, but a lot of them don't make enough money. And, and one of the things that I heard oftentimes was, when we make some money, we'll advertise. This is what I heard, a lot of, a lot of new startup businesses, not new black startup businesses, this is what I heard. When we make some money, we'll advertise. Well, how do people, how the hell people gonna know you here if you don't advertise now this was before this was before social media starts so it, facebook didn't even exist at this time we're talking about 99 2000 okay facebook didn't exist you had myspace twitter didn't exist okay uh youtube wasn't founded in 2005 okay social media has helped level the playing field a lot but how do people know to go to your social media site you have to do some type of advertising to get people to go to your social media site as well or social media pages so this is this is understanding th the marketing game okay so and it's very racist too my degree is in business administration with a major in marketing the university the advertising agencies is very racist 
So these are the games that people are, are play, who, are, who are out here trying to maneuver and trying to get information to African-Americans. These are the type of hoops we have to jump through to be able to, to stay on the air, stay in lot, stay alive, things like this. I've been doing this show here on 910 AM Superstation, WFDF. It'd be six years in April. I don't get paid to do this. I do it because it's needed. I got to find other ways to finance all this stuff. All right. Speaking of financing, if you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network. Dial a sign, The AHN Show through Cash App. Dial a sign, The AHN Show through Cash App. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash The AHN Show. You visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can register for the online courses I teach on Saturdays and Sundays, dealing with history. We'll tell you some more about that on the other side of the break. When we come back from the break, also, we're going to go to, uh, who was the, didn't we have a caller? Who was this? Have a call it okay. We'll go to Olaf. This is Olaf. We'll go to Olaf line one. Call in numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment. Also, I'm gonna let you hear. Um, I was on Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday, so we're gonna share some excerpts of that as well. Roland broke uh down what happened with the Black News Channel, and, and uh we have a lot more for you, and we'll talk about Katanji Brown Jackson. How she was mistreated by Republicans as well at her Senate confirmation hearing for U.S. Supreme Court justice. We'll be back in a few minutes. Jeanette Davis is a well-established author with six published books. Black Survival in White America from Past History to the Next Century was published in 1995 and it delves into the history of African Americans before slavery up to contemporary times. The Great Divide Between Blacks and Whites was released in 2008 and her autobiography, Black Just Like My Mama, was published in 2010. Soulful Journey, The Business of Beings, was released in December 2021, and her two latest books, Echoes from the Heart, Love Throws Poetry, and Master Being Human, were both published in January of 2022. Jeanette Davis' writings delve deeply into the psyche of black people from ancient to contemporary times. She cuts no corners and leaves no stones unturned in relating truth, letting the chips fall where they may on both African and European doorsteps. Order Jeanette Davis' books today at Amazon.com. Search for Jeanette Davis and get to know her work today. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Sunday, March 27th, 2022, and we are live. I was during the break. I was talking to the people on uh, our social media platforms who are watching us. We've got Daniel and we've got uh, Robert Campbell, who always watches. And we've got Lawrence Rock Ross, who always watches us. And Joya, who watches, and Fly Girl. Uh, Flagger called in a couple Sundays ago. We have Laquita. This is Laquinta. Laquinta. We have Laquinta. Laquinta watching us on on Facebook as well. And uh, who else? We have Daphne, uh, Adrian. Just a few of the people watching us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network. Then also on our YouTube channel, Michael M Hotep. I M H O T E P. Now, very quickly before we go to the phone lines, um, you can still register for the online classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, Saturday, it is uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, where they didn't teach you in school. This is a 10-week online class that I teach, and we deal with thousands of years of history, and we deal with what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place, okay? And uh, we take you throughout history, um, and we also deal with the 800-year occupation of Europe uh, by the Africans known as the Moors. So I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips, all of that. I'm going to post a link here. You can visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com is right on the home page. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. So a year from now, you can go back and watch the entire 10-week online class, all right? 
uh, the classes regularly $130 is on sale $60. As soon as you register, you can watch the classes we did this weekend. On uh, Sunday, uh, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., I teach from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. We start in uh, uh, 1803 with the Louisiana Purchase and the Haitian Revolution. Then we go through and see what leads up to the Civil War taking place. Then we deal with the Civil War, 1861, 1865, Reconstruction, 1865, 1877. We deal with the presidential election of 1876. We dealt with that in class today. Samuel J. Tilden uh, from New York versus uh, Rutherford B. Hayes of Ohio. Um, and then we deal with the Compromise of 1877, which ends Reconstruction. We deal with things like the Black Exodus of 1879, when 6,000 African Americans leave primarily Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas, going out west to Kansas. Uh, we deal with uh, the Jim Crow era, World War One, World War Two, Civil Rights Movement, Black Power Movement, and the Great Migration, 1915 to 1970. That that's the second class I teach. I do this on Sundays from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. That class is on sale, uh, also $60. So that's at uh, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have a bundle pack where you get both classes for hundred dollars. That's a two hundred sixty dollar value. Okay, let's go to the uh, phone lines. Let's go to is this Olaf? Olaf line one. Welcome to the African History Network show. Thanks for holding. Tell us where you're calling from. What's up, man? Yeah, this is Olaf calling from Brightmore. From, from, from Detroit. Brightmore, Detroit. Okay, go ahead, yeah. man. Thanks for holding. Yes, sir. My man. Hey, 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 hey Mike, and you are so hey, you are so right. I knew this was going to happen too because that was a great network. Let me let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. That Lamont Hill show, man, that was the best show on TV besides Roland Martin and Filter. Mm -hmm. Man, I mean, it was great content on his show. I mean, the whole station as a whole, now I could never catch it here in Detroit. You know, I, I would just watch. I, I don't. I don't think they even aired it here in here in Detroit. No, no, I it's channel the, channel uh, eleven sixteen. Channel eleven sixteen on Comcast. See, I don't have Comcast. Okay. Well, they, they, now they I, have I, some streaming I, services. I, you can I, I, you you can stream it on Roku. It. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. I understand you. Something. I, I got Xfinity, but what I would do, I would watch it on a YouTube channel. Right. Well, Xfinity, that's what I mean, Comcast. Oh, Xfinity. Xfinity's Comcast. Yeah, Xfinity is, is channel 1116 on Xfinity. And um they, they they are on some streaming networks. Now I don't I don't see they're on Roku also. I don't know if they started okay. on streaming networks, but they added they've added streaming recently. I just found out they added streaming. I watch them on Xfinity. I pay this high, this uh this high uh <laughs> Xfinity bill each week uh, each month. So um yeah. Okay. But, yeah, I don't but, think I had that in my package. Today. That's what it is. I, I don't think I had that in my package or something because I didn't have it. But, but here, because, but here's, here's something funny, you know Olaf, and I'll, I'll let you continue. So last year, I just I just upgraded to this to the uh, new uh, Xfinity cable box because I had this old box that I've had for years and it worked. So you know, I'm so busy, I ain't I ain't, I ain't make uh, any problems about it. But early last year, I called Xfinity because I wanted to get. The, mm -hmm. the black news channel and they told me that right. i had to the my cable box that i had was an old box and they said the way that the black news channel the way the network is set up i can't get it on my old cable box so i had to go to comcast take in my box get the new box when i got the new box i could i, I was able to get the uh -huh. black news channel all right so wow. it, 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 mm -hmm. and it, it has something to do with the way that they were uh brought the the uh the linear broadcasting they were doing it has something to do with that but my thing was wait a second now i can get negro nonsense on all the cable stations i don't need the new box to get negro yeah. nonsense but i gotta get the new box yeah. to get some black knowledge okay so ain't that stuff <laughs> I mean, you know what I, 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 yeah i'm listening yeah go ahead go ahead no, no, but yeah, that's that's great. I, I I can believe it. I can believe. I can tell you a real quick story. Back in the days when Roland Martin was on uh, News One Now, yeah, and I saw it on my partner's house, and he had Direct TV at the time. I had something else. I got Direct TV just so I could get TV One mm -hmm. to watch Roland Martin unfiltered, and that was about the only cable network that would show uh, uh, TV One. Do you remember that? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because 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 Roland yeah. would do his uh, he would do news one now. Uh, it was like eight a.m. Yeah. to nine a.m. something like that. Then they went for, then they went two hours seven a.m. to nine a.m. Then from ten a.m. to one p.m. he'd do his nasty syndicated radio show. You know who used to guest host his nasty yeah. syndicated radio show, right? Yeah, I, re- I remember that. He used to, he used to um, yeah. co-host for him. When he was yeah. missing, he would fill in. I re- yep. I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. I remember that. And, and I, remember when, I remember when he had Minister Farrakhan on. I think it was 2015. He had Minister Farrakhan on for an hour on News One Now. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and Dr. King was talking about redistributing the pain and targeted sustained economic withdrawal strategies. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah. it was hard. It was hard for them to get the. It was hard. I'll let you finish in just a second, Ola. It was hard for them to get the uh, okay. the top, top advertising. And, and and one of the things that happened was when you had a um a during I know during a um I can't remember was it was then or before then or something, but I know Kathy Hughes talked about um during a recession how the mm-hmm. the um the the car manufacturers the auto industry was the largest uh advertiser it's usually the largest advertiser in a lot of african-american oriented television the car manufacturers and when you had a recession the wow. car manufacturers cut way back on their advertising dollars and kathy hughes mm-hmm. talked about how she had to lay off a lot of people i think that may have been before uh news one now was canceled but i know um kathy hughes talked about having to lay off a lot of people from uh tv one as well right yeah but okay man that's right okay did you, it, was, was that it yeah, go ahead and, and, she had, and, and a lot of her radio stations she like like w uh like wchb mm-hmm. remember all uh, all the talk shows they had here right here right. in detroit now now uh, we we don't mention other radio stations like 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 a rule an unwritten rule in radio is like you don't mention other radio stations in the same market i understand what you're saying but go ahead oh, <laughs> but then we, yeah. we, we, we'll do that <laughs> but but anyway yeah they had to what happened was because i knew the people over at radio one and they had to lay off um here here in this market they had to lay off a lot of people and they had to just nasty just generally speaking uh they had to um what happened was uh and i and i and you brought up the radio I, I was talking about tv one just so uh people understand but just generally speaking right. what happened was when the when the auto manufacturers cut back on advertising on tv one that really hurt mm-hmm. tv one and it hurt her other business also okay all right all right olaf i gotta get mm-hmm. these other calls man and and i gotta get to this clip here okay right, thank you. Well, I appreciate you, man. okay all right no problem thanks for calling all right um stand by we're coming up on the break um um see uh, this one i want to do okay let, let's go to john quickly and let's get john in before this break john welcome to the african history network show thanks for holding tell us where you're calling from john I'm, I'm calling from Detroit, the east side of Detroit. And I I try to thank you for educating the people about how to get black news channel. Because I tried it myself and I couldn't get it. Mm-hmm. And I have to tell you, my home team, I, I turned that dog on TV off and I ain't turned on, I had to turn on in almost a year. I, I, I don't watch it anymore. I listen to the radio and your show all the time. And, and, and black, black cable and, and radio stations. But I, I tried to get it and I couldn't get it. So, so thanks for educating people how to get it. And I have to deny you, plus that Barack Obama told me to cut them dogs on TV off because they was watching too much of that junk and so forth. So that's right. all it was, a lot of a Negro junk. Right. And, they, uh, and, and, and the man Sarah told me they had to advertise black newspapers, black radio, black people, non and all that. They were mm-hmm. that too at, at Million Man Mars. I don't know why they keep on fooling with that garbage on that. Right, right. Okay. All right. All right. Stand by. Stand by, John. All right. You listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. And uh, we're coming up here on a commercial break. Call the numbers 313 778 7600. 313 778 7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment. When we come back, uh, I was on Roller Martin Unfiltered on Friday. We're going to let you hear some of that. We talked about the Black News Channel shutting down and what should have happened, with the, some of the mistakes they made. We'll be back in a few minutes. 
STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. Abundant Capital Group is a real estate investment company with over 20 years of experience in real estate. They specialize in two areas of real estate. One, they solve real estate problems with creative financing solutions that give the seller the most money for their property. And two, they show individuals how to get a higher rate of return on their investment capital with real estate note investing. If you are looking to sell or need to sell your property, here is what they provide. Market value offer, even if you have little or no equity, they typically pay all closing costs, which can be thousands of dollars. They close on a date of the seller's choosing and the seller does not have to be out of the house at the time of closing. They take the property in an as is condition and the seller is not required to make any repairs. Give them a call or email them today for a free consultation and see how they can help you with your real estate needs. Call them at 973-475-8488. That's 973-475-8488. Visit their website, AbundantCapitalGroup.com. That's AbundantCapitalGroup.com. And email them at ACG at AbundantCapitalGroup.com. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Abundant Capital Group. Okay. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation of Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hope Tep. Uh, it is Sunday, March 27th, 2022, and we are live. Okay. So we're back from break. And uh, I know, John, you were uh, on right before the break. If you still uh, have something to say, John, you can call back. Okay, uh, be sure to register for the online courses I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. We just posted the link here. I want to go to, uh, right before the break, we were talking about the Black News Channel announcing on Friday, March 25th, that they're shutting down for good after two years. They just celebrated a two-year anniversary. Uh, I posted about this on, on my Facebook fan page, The African History Network, on Friday. I did a couple of social media posts and posted some articles uh, dealing with this. And uh, we also talked about it uh, on uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered when I was on on Friday, March 25th. Uh, the, the, it was a big article from the uh, L.A. Times about this. And we've been talking about uh, some of this. We talked about this uh, uh, during the first part of the first hour. I want to go to this this clip here from Roland Martin Unfiltered. And um, Roland is uh, explaining uh, what happened with the Black News Channel. Let's go to this clip. So, uh, so, so let, let me unpack this so you can understand uh, what went on here. BNC uh, actually launched, they made the announcement in 2019. Uh, former Congressman J.C. Watts, it was his vision uh, to launch a black news cable network. Uh, he had been trying to do this for more than a decade. Uh, and he and I communicated in March of 2018 because I asked him what was the state of it. And he said that investors were going through the process of vetting their financials. And then it was later that year, probably around December, when they actually began to close on it. And then they announced that they were going to be launching. They, la they kept having the date pushed back and pushed back. They didn't launch until really uh, February 2020. Uh, but a major investor did come in, Shahid Khan the Pakistani-American billionaire who is the owner of the NFL Jacksonville Jaguars. He came in and invested $50 million into Black News Channel, thus becoming the majority shareholder. So Black News Channel went from being a Black-owned cable network to a Black-targeted cable network by virtue of him being the majority owner. This is JC and Shahid Khan talking about the Black News Channel before they launched the time to launch a TV network focused on the African American got the memos, viewers. Well, Catherine, uh, the Black News Channel is culturally specific to the African American community. You've got 200 plus stations on any cable system. We are the one location that you can come and find out about wellness, culture, 
um, you know, current affairs as it relates to uh, the African American community. So um, we launch on November 15th of this year, and we're looking forward to uh, creating a venue that uh, African Americans can uh, find culturally specific issues pertaining to them. Congrats. Shad, you're an investor in this channel, and I'm wondering, when you looked at this, how do you think that the Black News Channel will compete against uh, news networks that already have the resources? Well, I think it's going to do real well. To add to what JC was saying, it's specific needs, needs of a community that's really underserved, the African American. It's great for me to be part of it. It's been under planning for a long time and then to come in and help provide financially so it launches and launches well. You heard there where JC Watt said that they were launching in November of 2019. That got pushed to December, then January, then finally in February. So they launched in February 2020. Well, guess what? After they launched, uh, the, the co-CEO, Bob Brillante, uh, he was actually um, let go. They announced he was moving on to pursue other opportunities, uh, but he was let go uh, from the network. He, of course, uh, launched the uh, Florida News Channel. Uh, and, and of course, and he always had his, his idea of actually doing a black news network. You folks may not realize that uh, when you had a uh, major broadcasting cable network, they had partnered with him uh, to actually do something uh, similar to BNC. Uh, and so they did it uh, first. This is a photo. This is a uh, uh, photo. It's a story right here in the Tallahassee newspaper. When he stepped down after a couple of months, you see the story was dated uh, April 13th, uh, 2020. So here's what happened after that. You see that uh, this was their original logo right here. Then uh, they brought in Prince O'Hare, a uh, longtime television news executive. He eventually became the CEO, and he led a massive rebranding of the network. You see that logo that's right behind him? Uh, that was their new branding. They changed their whole slogan to truth, and they went through uh, uh, all of these different changes, and then they went on this huge hiring spree uh, hiring a number of people. You heard in the letter he wrote, they referenced the 250 black journalists and um, production folks that they hired. Here was the fundamental problem with Black News Channel, because people have been asking me this question, why did this fail? Why is it didn't succeed? What's going on? What's the whole deal here? The reality is this here. It was the absolute worst time to launch a cable network. Why? Because the world had been changing. The court cutting came in. People began to get rid of cable. And then they began to sh go towards online. I told J.C. Watts directly, don't launch a linear network. Launch it as a digital network. I said, why? More cost effective. You can grow it faster and larger. And you're gonna, not going to be able to spend as much money. Now, why does that matter? A lot of people out there are saying, this ain't right. I mean, this man is a billionaire. He got the money. Y'all, folk who are billionaires ain't in the business of losing money. That ain't what they do. They see what's going on. If you don't see the profit potential, I'm cutting ties. My understanding, for the last three months, they've been un he's, been he's been struggling and not wanting to fund what's been going on. You read the letter where they had the layoffs uh, in December. Those were not enough layoffs. They were burning too much cash. So the first mistake they made was launching a linear network. Now I need y'all to understand the cable business. You know the cable business, how it has always worked, you get paid for, subs for subscribers. So if you're in 51 million homes, you negotiate the deal where you get two cents, three cents, five cents, a dime, uh, a, a quarter, uh, you look at a dollar. Uh, the, most the most expensive folks in terms of on cable networks have long been ESPN, Fox News, because the amount of money they get per cable subscriber. So if you have cable te television right now, when you look at your bill, you look at how much money in your bill, a significant portion, the largest portion of your bill right now is go going to Fox News and ESPN. That's why people start cutting cable. They said cable bills got too high. Spending $100, $150, $200 for cable, they said, that's enough. The problem for Black News Channel, they were not getting subscription fees. So they were a 100% ad-supported cable network. Well, folks, that subscription fee is a revenue line. That means that... It's another side of the break. Back that up uh, to about the 10-minute mark. Uh, 
um, Taylor. Back it up to about the 10 minute mark. We're going to pick it up there on the other side of the break. I was on uh, Roland's panel on Friday. I talked about the Black News Channel as well. We're going to talk about this some more on the other side of the break. What can we learn? Because the next channel that launches, we don't want to make the same mistakes that the Black News Channel made. We'll be back in a few minutes. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skincare and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation of Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Sunday, March 27th, 2022. And we are live. The calling number is 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment. Okay, so in the first hour, we were talking about the uh, Black News Channel. Uh, Prince L. Hare, CEO of the Black News Channel, uh, announced on uh, Friday, March 25th, that due to uh, financial problems, the Black News Channel was shutting down for good. We know there had been rumblings about financial problems. They had low ratings, things like this. I've been reading about this for the past few months. Uh, I watched the Black News Channel every day. I knew some of the panelists on the Black News Channel. Uh, I knew Yodita Walde. I met, uh, I interviewed Yodita a couple of times a few years ago when I used to guest host for uh, Roland Martin on his nationally syndicated radio show. The uh, so, uh, Some of the content from the Black News Channel I would share on this show. They had some really good content, but there were some fundamental mistakes uh, that were made. They tried to grow too quickly. They um, brought on a lot of journalists things like this, quality journalists, but they were growing too quickly and did not generate the uh, revenue that was needed to sustain the uh, expenditures. Uh, they had low ratings. Uh, but one of the mistakes that was made was that they were launched as a linear network as opposed to a direct, uh, as opposed to um, a digital network. They should have done streaming. It should have been a streaming network as opposed to a network on cable because it's more expensive to do a network on cable and they were not getting the subscribership fees that um, is required to really sustain a network like that. Now, I, I was on Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday and we talked about this and Roland broke down um, some uh, information about the Black News Channel from understanding, from being in media and understanding media. OK, let's go back to this clip, uh, uh, Taylor. To understand the cable business, you know the cable business, how it has always worked. You get paid for subs for subscribers. So if you're in 51 million homes, you negotiate the deal where you get two cents, three cents, five cents, a dime, uh, a, a quarter. Uh, you look at a dollar. Uh, the most expensive, the most expensive folks in terms of on cable networks have long been ESPN. Fox News, because the amount of money they get per cable subscriber. So if you have cable te television right now, when you look at your bill, you look at how much money in your bill, a significant portion, the largest portion of your bill right now is go going to Fox News and ESPN. 
That's when people start cutting cable. They said cable bills got too high. Spending $100, $150, two hours for cable, they said, that's enough. The problem for Black News Channel, they were not getting subscription fees. So they were a 100% ad-supported cable network. Well, folks, that subscription fee is a revenue line. That means that you're airing on the network hoping folks are watching. You need to have high numbers so you can actually get advertising. When you don't have high numbers in uh, cable, you, got, you get what is called bottom of the barrel advertising, which is direct marketing. What's direct marketing? That's when you're sitting there seeing those commercials with a 1-800 number attached to it, and it's Joe Namath doing some kind of insurance pitch, or Jimmy J.J. Walker. That's direct marketing, folks. Those are the commercials that you're seeing. Those commercials, you get money, it's low amount of money. So those were the, the, the majority of the advertisers that were on the network. They were only averaging, a few months ago, 4,000 viewers uh, in an hour. Now, the numbers begin to improve, begin to go up around 10,000 this week because of the confirmation hearings, is their best ever numbers. Their best ever numbers. And so, but guess what? It got cut. Now, you're watching and you might be saying, wait a minute, this guy Shahid Khan, he put in $50 million. My goodness, uh, how in the world is it uh, they somehow uh, could not solve this thing and figure it out? Let me unpack that as well, folks. I need y'all to understand the economics. There's a whole bunch of people been tweeting me all day. I don't understand why this couldn't work. Why, I don't know why couldn't some black celebrities get together and buy it. Why couldn't Byron Allen buy it? Y'all, if a billionaire Shahid Khan cut ties, why in the hell would Byron Allen and somebody else do it? Now, I was told that Byron Allen did offer $30 million to buy the network. Khan did not accept that. He wanted $100 million. Why? He'd already put in $50 million. But even at $30 million, really didn't make any sense because Byron could simply take that money and put, put $10 or $15 million in his GRIO channel and the GRIO website, build up their news side, and you don't have to assume all the debt from the Black News Channel. Second thing is, you were, not, you were not big enough from a marketing standpoint. A lot of people said, I never heard of the Black News Channel. You didn't see billboards and commercial and digital ads. You didn't see a major social media presence. That costs money. So let me y'all tell y'all what uh, we went on. Now, I did have some negotiations with them. When Bob Brilliante was CEO, co-CEO of the network, they approached me about hosting a show on the Black News Channel. We met here, we met, did a conference call, we met here in D.C. This is a true story, y'all. I've never told this publicly. People who know me personally, I've discussed this offline. He, they met with me and they wanted me to host a primetime show, 30 minutes, which first of all made no sense whatsoever. You don't host a 30-minute damn show. You do the whole hour. It's a 24-hour network. If you do a 30-minute show, you got to put another 30-minute show behind it. But that made no sense. So they wanted me to host a 30-minute show, and they were going to have uh, Larry Elder follow me, and they offered me $85,000 to host a 30-minute show, uh, and then they wanted me to also utilize my social media, promote the network. I said, I'm not even responding to that offer. I'm sorry. I made $85,000 running Tom Jonah's website, blackamericaweb.com, in 2001. Do you actually think, after what I've accomplished over the next 18 years, I'm going to take $85,000 Hell no. So I told him I'm not taking that offer. Yeah. Let's go back to the phone lines in just a minute. And then you're going to hear my responses to this also. Because as I talked about in the first hour, we talked about some of the mistakes that uh, the Black News Channel made. Now, they have fantastic con content. I watch the Black News Channel every day. Once again, I know some of the people on there, some of the panelists, Amisha Cross, Candace Kelly, legal analyst, uh, my girl, Monique Presley. My girl, Monique Presley, was on there, attorney Monique. I watch her on uh, Instagram. I watch her show on Instagram. She had Yodita Walde on a couple of days ago on her Instagram channel, Monique Presley. Um, and they were talking about the confirmation hearings of Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. You see my man, Dr. Greg Carr. A lot of those people you see on the Black News Channel, you see in Roller Martin Unfiltered. Dr. Dr. Greg Carr, he's spoken here in Detroit at least twice I know of. I've been to some of his lectures. He's been to some of mine. Uh, we, we were at the uh, um, uh, Dr. Ron Walters, um, was it uh, State, of, uh, uh, State of the Black World Conference back in 2016 after Trump uh, uh, won the election. Dr. Greg Carr, chair of the Afro-American Studies Department at Howard University. He's a regular on the Black News Channel. 
they had some really good content. It just one of the problems was it was not marketed correctly. Let's go um, back to the phone lines. Uh, is it is it Ron that we have next, uh, Taylor? Whoever's next, let's hey, put a, mean, Mike. hey, how you doing? Is this Ron? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ron. Okay, hey, uh, uh, thanks, Ron. Thanks for holding. Tell us where you're calling from, Ron. Southfield. Southfield. Okay, uh, go I ahead with your question or comment. Question. Go ahead. Uh, one. Uh, you said, did I hear you right when you said that the, the DNC would be running some uh, uh, old newscast? Yeah, what, what, yeah, what, yeah, what they're going to do is the rest of this month, they're going to re-air broadcast. They, 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 they were airing documentaries, stuff like that. They're going to re-air that. What they've been doing so far is re-airing some of the coverage they had of the confirmation hearing, hearing of Jessica Tanji Brown Jackson. So they're going to re-air pre-recorded uh, content throughout the rest of this month. Okay, what time and what day? And it's on Comcast, eleven sixteen, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're on twenty four okay, hours. What time? They, is, what time? They're on twenty four hours a day. <laughs> twenty four hours a day. Yeah. On eleven sixteen. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, now, 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 Ron, 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 Ron. Ron. Yeah. While you while you watch the Black News yeah. Channel, have nine ten a.m. Superstation WFDF on at the same time. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I don't listen to. I mean, my my favorite person. I mean, I I I, I catch your time. Ron, I'm, I'm Ron, Ron, thing, but, Ron, 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 yeah, Ron. Slow down. Yeah. This, ain't, this, is, this is not my radio station. If you had the Black News Channel on, have nine ten a.m. Superstation on at the same time. Okay, Ron. Okay. Oh, okay. thank you, thank you. So, uh, go ahead. Minister Farrakhan, you said Minister Farrakhan comes on. Is this TV one? No. What what I said yeah, was back right. in what I said was back in I think it was twenty fifteen. Roland Martin interviewed uh, Minister Farrakhan on his show um, on TV One News One Now with Roland Martin back in 2016. He interviewed him for an hour. Okay. Yeah, but you know, uh, okay. I think uh, okay. I think Minister Farrakhan comes on. Last time I saw the schedule, I think he's on uh, uh, 9 10 a.m. in the morning on the weekend, like 6 a.m. something, uh, 5 a.m. something like that. Taylor, he, check, check Taylor. He is, me, and, that, and that's why I was asking. You. I just can't get up at that time of morning. I okay. like it here, but. That's just me. You know, I just can't. I know I won't make it. I, I'm not up at. Okay. Uh, hold, 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 hold. Just one second. Ron, uh, Ron, and, Ron, and, Ron, Ron, Ron. Slow down. Just a second. Yeah. Taylor, do me a favor. Check the, if you can check the uh, schedule for 9, 10 a.m. Just text me when uh, uh, Minister Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam is on on 9, 10. Okay. Thanks, Taylor. Go ahead, Ron. Yeah, if he's on anywhere from maybe from 8 on up, I can catch him. But, and I, you know, I understand. I'm not suggesting they should change his time or anything like that. You know, I mean, he has to do what's convenient for him. I got that. I don't have a problem with that. Right. I just won't make it, you know, but I like to hear him if, if he was right. on later. So I'll, I'll wait and see if uh, your engineer tell you what time he is. It might yeah, be later so we'll time. let people know. And we'll let people know about the programming here on the radio station. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do okay. you have, you have no, another I, comment, Ron? That's it, Mike. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, okay. Ron. Thank Thanks you. for calling. Keep listening. Okay. Let's go to... Um, uh okay let's do that uh i want to go to um hold on we're gonna go to clip two here in just a second um uh taylor so we got uh clip two okay so this is uh roland martin and filtered again this is another uh portion of that discussion let's go to clip two uh taylor you do not get it you're not getting subscription fees you're doa which means you better control your cost to ensure that you're going to be able to survive. If you do not survive, then you are dead. They simply had too many people. They were doing live shots from different places that made no sense whatsoever. You have to maximize your expenses and maximize your revenue. They had too much money going out of the door, not enough money going in. You can look great, but no advertiser is going to give you money, no real advertiser, if you only have 4,000 people watching. The other thing is they didn't have deep pockets. Let me explain something to y'all. Let me pull this up so y'all can understand. Um, Brian Roberts, who is the CEO of Comcast, uh, said point blank on a conference call the other day, that Peacock, y'all know Peacock, right? The network 
that NBC launched. Do y'all know, don't show it yet, but do y'all understand how much money Peacock lost last year? Go to my iPad. Last year, Peacock, the new streaming network of NBC, lost $1.7 billion in 2021. $1.7 billion. Y'all, in the same article, he said, come right here, go back. For 2022, Comcast expects Peacock losses to total about $2.5 billion as its investment in content doubles. Now, you maybe you watching and you're like, whoa, whoa, hold up, hold up. Y'all lost a billion seven last year? And y'all gonna lose $2.5 billion this year? Y'all, they publicly traded. They market cap exceeds $100 billion. They say we can absorb the losses now because what we're actually trying to build towards. Black News Channel had one billionaire who put in 50 million. Pause it right there. All right, uh, back that up to about the 20, uh, the 20 minute mark and we'll pick it up there on the other side of the break. It's blowing my mind. Wait a second, you have $1.7 billion to lose and you still in the game? This is a different world is one of my favorite TV shows, but this is a different world. We'll be back in a few minutes. iRedify is a black owned digital platform that showcases black and brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African-American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read eBooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally. Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iRedify.com. Sign up for your membership today. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. Shall we deal with current events of history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Unfortunately, many people confuse what racism is. Racism is a power structure. It was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. It's going to be laws and policies that take it out. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. We have it on a 910 AM superstation. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. All right. Uh, right before the break, um, I was sharing this segment of uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered, and I was on the show. Uh, this is from uh, Friday, March uh, 25th. We were talking about the Black News Channel shutting down. We're going to go back to that in just a second here. But ScreenRant.com, uh, Roland was talking about Peacock, which is nbc's streaming service uh peacock losing 1.7 billion dollars in 2021 now see this is this is a whole this is a whole different world you got 1.7 billion to lose and you're still in business but nbc is is, is publicly traded it's a publicly traded company you look at this piece from screen rant see Black News Channel didn't have deep pockets like that. Well, I don't know any African-American-owned business or targeted like that that has deep pockets, okay? Peacock lost 
$1.7 billion in 2021, despite having 9 million subscribers by the end of 2021, the streaming service still lost NBC Universal and Comcast $1.7 billion, okay? Because we know um, NBC is owned by NBC Universal and Comcast. NBC streaming service Peacock's losses grew into a staggering total of $1.7 by the end of 2021. The service was officially launched in July 2020 during a time that most of the globe was still stuck at home during the early COVID-19 international lockdowns. The service offered exclusive streaming for many popular uh, for many popular NBC shows once their streaming agreements with other platforms lapsed, including the fan lamented moment when The Office was removed from Netflix in January 2021. Peacock was also home to certain day and date uh, uh, video on demand releases of 2021 theatrical movies from Universal, including The Boss, ba the Boss Baby, Family Business, and Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills. I ain't see any of that stuff. Their exclusive programming includes uh, original series like the musical comedy Girls Five Ever and the teen drama One of Us is Lying. I don't know what none of this stuff is. As, as, as series based on their uh, IP included um, MacGruber and the updated Da Vinci Code. No one of y'all lost $1.7 billion. Uh, prequel series, The Lost Symbol. They'll, they also rebooted several, several dormant series from the 90s like Punky Brewster, Saved by the Bell, and the upcoming dramatic retelling of Fresh Prince titled Bel Air. Now, Bel Air, a lot of people, I haven't watched Bel Air either. A lot of this stuff I don't watch. I'm sorry. I don't watch none of this stuff. Um, a lot, I've seen a lot of people posting about Bel Air, and I guess it's pretty good, things like this. But read this article here. from the, This is from January 27th, 2022. Peacock lost $1.7 billion in 2021. I'm still trying to get over that. You lose $1.7 billion, and you're still in the game, but they're expected to lose. Peacock is expected to lose $2.5 billion in 2022 as they continue to build subscribership and acquire new content this is a, this is a whole different world different a different world one of my favorite tv shows this is a whole different world you can lose 1.7 billion in a year and you're not filing bankruptcy bankruptcy you still in the game okay so uh i want to go back to this clip here from uh roland martin unfiltered and roland is explaining what happened um let me pull this back up he's explaining what happened with the black news channel let's go back to this uh oh oh also before we go to that uh taylor just sent me the information minister farrakhan is on 9 10 a.m superstation wfdf um comes on 5 a.m what day taylor it, it, it just come on the air tell me because we got to go with what what day is Saturdays and Sundays? Saturdays and Sundays, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Minister Farrakhan is on. Is it a half hour, hour? I guess it's a half hour. Uh, right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFTL. What is it? It's an hour. It's an hour. He's on for an hour. Okay, right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation uh, WFDF. Okay, let's let's go back to uh, uh, Roland Martin breaking down what happened with the Black News Channel. They had too much money going out of the door, not enough money going in. You can look great. But no advertiser is going to give you money, no real advertiser, if you only have 4,000 people watching. The other thing is they didn't have deep pockets. Let me explain something to y'all. Let me pull this up so y'all can understand. Um, Brian Roberts, who is the CEO of Comcast, uh, said point blank on a conference call the other day that Peacock, y'all know Peacock, right? The network that NBC launched. Do y'all know? Don't show it yet. But do y'all understand how much money Peacock lost last year? Go to my iPad. Last year, Peacock, the new streaming network of NBC, lost 
$1.7 billion in 2021. $1.7 billion. Y'all, in the same article, he said, come right here, go back. For 2022, Comcast expects Peacock losses to total about $2.5 billion as its investment in content doubles. Now, you may be, you're watching and you're like, whoa, whoa, hold up, hold up. Y'all lost a billion seven last year? And y'all gonna lose $2.5 billion this year? Y'all, they publicly traded. They market cap exceeds $100 billion. They say we can absorb the losses now because what we're actually trying to build towards. Black News Channel had one billionaire who put in 50 million. This is something you need to understand. You cannot keep up with the Joneses. They were trying to do CNN and MSNBC type news. You can't compete against people who are making, in the case of MSNBC, 700 million in profit. CNN is making a billion in profit. Fox News is making 1.5 billion in profit. So oh, you got you got uh, CNN. First of all, we, I, I want to go back to this piece here from uh, Screen Rant dealing with Peacock, and we'll go back to the phone lines. Okay, if you look at this article from Screen Rant that talks about Peacock losing 1.7 billion in 2021. Okay, it goes on to say Peacock's current plan is to, which is owned by NBC Universal and Comcast. Peacock's current plan is to double down on spending on their original content, spending on their original content, which means that they are producing shows. They, 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 these are shows, that's like Netflix producing shows, things like this, and Amazon. Peacock is doing this. Peacock's current plan is to double down on their spending on original content and focus on expanding their paid subscribers while enticing new ones to the platform. Over the course of the next few years, NBC Universal and their parent company Comcast want to be spending $5 billion a year on original content. I'm in the wrong business. Over the over the course of the next few years, NBC Universal and their parent company Comcast want to be spending five billion dollars a year on original content. If they can continue to scoop up their popular properties from other streaming services as well, they may be able to boost those numbers over the course of several years. This, this is a different world. OK, things is things still aren't looking good for Peacock as as a competitive streaming service. However, streaming content was at the top of the food chain in 2020 when out of home entertainment options uh, was sparse due to the closure of movie theaters, theme parks and many other venues. The pandemic boosted the, the, the pandemic boost help Netflix series like Emily in Paris. I don't know what the hell that is. And Bridgerton, I know what Bridgerton is, never watched it, but I've heard of it. I've seen some clips of it. It helped Emily in Paris and Bridgerton reach the top of the charts. Likewise, Disney Plus, which began debuting its live action Marvel Cinematic Universe series during a time when movie theaters still weren't showing new blockbuster films, is now among the top streaming services in the market. Now, I know about the Marvel, I'm know about Disney Plus because I see I see them advertise on Facebook and they advertise the Falcon and Captain America, all this stuff. So I know about this. I don't I don't have Disney Plus. I have uh, Hulu and and Amazon Prime and barely watch Hulu. Um, I'm trying to think, do I need to cancel Hulu or not? Because I barely watch it. But I know about Disney Plus because they advertise on Facebook. I see their advertisements. OK, read the rest of this here. This is from Screen Rant from um, January 27, 2022. Peacock lost one point seven billion dollars in 2021. All right. Uh, 
when we come back from the break, Taylor, we're going to clip three. So when we come back from the break, you're going to uh, uh, hear me. I was on Roland's panel. We talked about the Black News Channel. And because this is my show, I have more time to talk. So I'm going to give you some more information about um, some things that the Black News Channel did wrong. But we can learn from this. They laid a template. They laid a template. Okay. You listen to the African History Network show right here on Nat and M Superstation of Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. Calling numbers 313 778 7600. 313 778 7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment. We'll be back in a few minutes. Abundant Capital Group is a real estate investment company with over 20 years of experience in real estate. They specialize in two areas of real estate. One, they solve real estate problems with creative financing solutions that give the seller the most money for their property. And two, they show individuals how to get a higher rate of return on their investment capital with real estate note investing. If you are looking to sell or need to sell your property, here is what they provide. Market value offer, even if you have little or no equity, they typically pay all closing, costs which can be thousands of dollars they close on a date of the seller's choosing and the seller does not have to be out of the house at the time of closing they take the property in an as-is condition and the seller is not required to make any repairs give them a call or email them today for a free consultation and see how they can help you with your real estate needs call them at 973-475-8488 that's 973-475-8488 visit their website abundantcapitalgroup.com that's abundantcapitalgroup.com and email them at acg at abundantcapitalgroup.com follow them on instagram and facebook at abundant capital group Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. OK, um, so we've been talking about uh, the Black News Channel announcing that they were uh, shutting down. And I was sharing excerpts uh, from Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday, uh, March 25th. This was the day that they announced they were shutting down. Uh, we're going to clip three, Taylor. So I was on, I'm a panelist on Roland Martin and filtered every Friday. I was on Roland Roland's panel on Friday and um, I talked about this also. Let's go back to this clip. But now y'all understand, I hope, why y'all hear me talking about black owned advertising. Why y'all hear me talking about why we should get our fair share of the $1 billion the federal government spends every year in advertising. Now I hope you understand why I fight so hard to get our fair share of the $322 billion being spent every single year on advertising that black owned media gets 0.5 to 1%. Folks, can there be a black owned media network that is thriving and successful? Yes. Are we trying to build it at the Black Star Network? Yes. But do understand, I will not try to act like I'm at the Palm restaurant when all I got is Golden Corral money. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take my behind to the Golden Corral and go enjoy that meal. And then one day I'm gonna tell my staff, I'm gonna take all y'all out to dinner at the Palm Restaurant. But what we not gonna do is go to the Palm Restaurant today and then I'm telling y'all how it great it was when we were together because ain't nobody having any jobs. This is business. And people are hurting and I totally get it. But the bottom line is there were some strategic mistakes made by the folks at Black News Channel that led to today's decision. Let's hope others don't make the same mistake. My next guest, hold on one second. I do want folks to go right ahead and weigh in. Um, I'll start with you, uh, Michael Imhotep. Well, Roland, first of all, you just gave what we call in, in business school, we would call these case studies. You just gave a case study on an African-American media company, 
Okay, African American targeted media company. Uh, so that was fantastic what you just broke down. And you know, I, I watched the Black News Channel. I know a lot of the people on there. Um, and I, it, it, I think it was last Friday on your show. I talked about how your YouTube views are are, are much greater than their YouTube views. So that was that was something I was noticing, and there was a disconnect. And then um, I'm, I'm looking at the content. They had good content, but I'm looking at the low YouTube uh, views uh, for most of their videos. Mo most videos don't get more than probably 2,000 views, uh, most of their videos. Then um, also I remember it was some months ago, it talked about how out of 124 cable stations they were like second from last something yes, like that they, yeah so, second from last they were tied with one of byron allen's cable the cable network i think i think uh one of his cable networks uh yeah they were averaging four thousand viewers uh in prime time yep you know so um i have i have respect for jc watts for what he was attempting to do you know i may disagree with him here and there i have respect for what he was trying to do hopefully um uh, Something, uh, th th this channel, I've been rolling with you since like 2016, Roland, since I used to guest host your nasty syndicated radio show. So hopefully something else will come along. Streaming is the future. Okay. Uh, and, you know, the lastly, uh, Peacock losing $1.7 billion, man, I'm in the wrong business. I mean, you got $1.7 billion to lose? Yeah. And, again, I mean <laughs> and keep in mind, Next Star, Next Star flipped WGN America to launch News Nation, a cable network, right. and they are losing millions as well, but they're publicly traded, and they can afford right. that. When you have a exactly. sole investor, you have yep. to protect every single dollar. Let me go to Kelly. Kelly? Mm -hmm. Um, first and foremost, thank you for this masterclass on, you know, communication strategy and business management. I mean, it was phenomenal. Um, and you were absolutely right in everything you said. Um, but the, the, the moral of the story here, uh, really is to just minimize your expenses and maximize your revenue and BNC did not do that. Okay. All right. You can watch the rest of that, um, on Roland's YouTube channel. Uh, Roland Martin on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Check that out. Download the Black Star Media app as well. Check that out. Kelly Bethea, she's uh, my co-panelist usually each Friday on Roland Martin and Filtered. Also, attorney Matt Manning was on the panel as well. Okay. Um, so something else. Now, there were people who, because you get these ignorant, these, I don't, I don't want to, so you get these stupid people to be polite. Who are laughing at the black news channel shutting down things like this first of all let's let's look at this jc watts well let me back up jc watts went to a number of different investors to uh get them to invest in the black news channel okay um the fact that he couldn't get for whatever reason for whatever reason, I wasn't involved in the uh, I wasn't involved in the meetings. But for whatever reason, the fact that he could not get uh, any African American investors to be the principal investor, fifty million by like fifty million dollars, and you got I'm gonna call some names. I don't know. Maybe he went to him. Maybe they don't like him. Whatever. Michael Jordan, Oprah, Bob Johnson. You got you got Dr. Dre that just spent seven million dollars so Negroes could perform at the to perform the halftime show at the in, uh, at the Super Bowl and the halftime show lasted fourteen minutes. Go do the research. Dr. Dre paid seven million dollars so they could perform the halftime show for a largely white audience while Colin Kaepernick is still banned from the NFL. So what if Eminem took a knee so, and? He pays seven million dollars for that. So the fact that JC Watts, for whatever reason, couldn't get African Americans to solely invest the black news channel, and Shahid Khan came in with a 50 million dollar investment, dude. That's to me, that's you know, that's sad for us. That's sad for us that it came down to that. Okay. Now, um, also, when you look at, just looking at the numbers, uh, 7 billion, you had, um, I'm sorry, 
700 million msnbc made 700 million dollars in profit last year cnn one billion dollars in profit fox news 1.5 billion so the black news channel one of the things you should have done is started with a stream start a streaming service started streaming only as opposed to going uh the cable route because it, it would have been much cheaper they had some good journalists but they tried to grow too quickly bring on a lot of these journalists too quickly high paid uh, uh some of the high, higher paid tv hosts things like that and they went through the money too quickly they meant well but they went through the money too quickly but this is an opportunity for whoever has the next channel like that to learn from the mistakes that were made when you when you um look at the montgomery bus boycott which was a success when you study the history in general the montgomery bus boycott started as a one-day boycott december monday morning december 5th 1955 after rosa parks refused to give up her seat on the cleveland avenue bus in montgomery alabama december 1st 1955. they were wanted to break the back of segregation in montgomery alabama which is the capital of, of alabama segregation was written into the alabama state constitution in 1901. now they had a reconstruction constitution in 1867 in alabama but that was re, that was rescinded that was revoked the montgomery bus boycott lasted for 381 days it put an economic hurting on Montgomery, Alabama and the Montgomery Bus Line Inks, Inc., the Montgomery Bus Company. What ended segregation on the buses was the lawsuit of Browder versus Gale filed February, uh, February 1st, 1956 by attorney Fred Gray. And this lawsuit goes all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And um, after appeals, the decision comes down from the U.S. Supreme Court that segregation on the buses in Montgomery is unconstitutional. Now, the template for the Montgomery bus boycott was the Baton Rouge, Louisiana bus boycott of 1953 led by the Reverend T.J. Jemison. This boycott lasted eight days. It didn't end segregation on the buses in baton rouge louisiana but it cost the bus company sixteen hundred dollars a day in losses but dr king and ed nixon and others leaders of the montgomery bus boycott they called reverend tj jemison to get advice on how to structure and maneuver their economic boycott and they got the idea from the for, for the 300 car dispatch system that they used in montgomery alabama they get this from ed nixon so what some people may have looked at as a failure was the template for a success that came uh, two, three years later. But a lot of times people couldn't see it. So hopefully the mistakes that the Black News Channel made will be a template for something else to come. That's a successor that will succeed. They'll learn from those mistakes. Listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation of Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Come and travel with me to a time long ago and place far away. You will experience high adventure and excitement. You are fighting alongside an ancient army in fierce battle. Feel the exhilaration of struggle and final conquest. My name is Maninkare, and I am both a prince and a priest in one of the most advanced civilizations humans have ever produced. I want you to ride with me in my chariot as I slay the barbarians who have come to invade my land. I invite you to sit at the conference table with the great Pharaoh Taharqa and his ministers as they plan intrigue and use subterfuge to outmaneuver and defeat the enemy. Come back with me to the land of your ancestors, to the beautiful land of Kemet. So open the pages of this book and begin the adventure. 
Find out what happens in the book Menenkere Battles the Assyrians in the Nile Valley from author Makari Jones. Get your copy today at Amazon.com. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. Welcome back to the African History Network so right here on 910 on the Superstation, the Future Radio. All right, uh, Taylor, do that clip up at the eight second mark, the one I just sent you from the Black News Channel. We'll go into that in just a minute here. Okay, uh, we're going to switch gears here. So, uh, we, so we talked about the Black News Channel for the majority of the show and them shutting down. Uh, now, also, a big story uh, from this week, and, and you know, we're on uh, Monday through Friday, 11 p.m., the midnight Eastern Standard Time right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, WFDF, and then on Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I've been talking about each day covering the confirmation hearings of um, Ketanji Brown Jackson, okay? On uh, the Black News Channel, Yadita Wode's show, uh, she talked about uh, day number three, okay, of the confirmation hearings. And uh, she had my girl, uh, Monique Presley on, attorney Monique, Monique Presley. Let's go to this clip, uh, Taylor. Black News Channel. Watch us on all major Cue it cable up at the providers eight and mark. major streaming Start platforms. Up at the eight second mark. Finally, news that speaks to us. Good evening. This is Making the Case. I'm getting to Walda. For a third straight day, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson appeared for a marathon day of confirmation hearings on Capitol Hill. Judge Jackson is all but certain to be confirmed as our nation's first black woman Supreme Court justice. But to get to the high court, she has to go through the Senate Judiciary Committee. There were heated exchanges, which at times got personal, as Republican senators questioned Judge Jackson's sentencing record, patriotism, and even her faith. Okay, if, if, if I can change my gender, if I can be a woman, and then an hour later, if I decide I'm not a woman anymore, I guess I would lose Article Three standing. Uh, tell me, does that same principle apply to other protected characteristics? For example, I'm, I'm an Hispanic man. Could, could I decide I was an Asian man? W would I have the ability to be an Asian man and challenge Harvard's discrimination because I made that decision? Senator, I'm not able to answer your question. You're asking me about hypotheticals and um, I'm asking you how you would assess standing if I, if I came in and said I have decided I identify as an Asian man. I would assess standing the way I assess other legal issues, which is to listen to the arguments made by the parties, consider the relevant precedents uh, and the constitutional principles involved and make a determination. So you are suggesting that in some individual case, um, the right to abortion could extend through the entire pregnancy up until the time the child is delivered? No, Senator. I'm suggesting that I'm not aware of any case that handled the issue. You were here for Kavanaugh. If she's confused about what happened, some people on the other side had an accusation against Judge Kavanaugh that during high school, uh, he sexually assaulted somebody. And the rest is history. That was known to the people on the other side and never revealed during the meetings they had with Judge Kavanaugh. It was literally ambushed. He was ambushed. How would you feel if we did that to you? Senator, she said nothing to do with the cause. No, but I'm no, asking no. her about how, how she time. may feel about what y'all did. With me for the hour to talk about the highlights are my panel of legal experts, Monique Presley, a trial attorney and crisis manager, C.K. Hoffler, CEO of the C.K. Hoffler firm and immediate past president of the National Bar Association, and A. Scott Bolden, a legal and political analyst and managing partner at Reed Smith. So, listen, we, we watched Judge Jackson endure two full days of questioning from members of the Senate. And it's been both joyous and stressful to watch, for me at least. Here you have the first black woman who's about to, be, to ascend to the highest court in the land, and, and I'm filled with pride and joy, right? But 
I also felt angry watching her, with all of her brilliance, have to sit there in front of underqualified men throwing misleading and misinformed attacks her way while remaining respectful and poised through it all. Monique, your takeaway from these hearings so far. She will rise. Uh, I'm certain of it. I'm excited about it. It is a joyful occasion for me. And I, I agree fully with everything that Senator Booker used his last section of time to say today, I was thankful uh, for that cleansing, for that refreshing, for that shower, for that shift of the atmosphere. Uh, I wept as he spoke. And I wept along with my, my sister judge, soon to be justice, because that is really what it is, this is about. And everyone else has been doing exactly what can be expected from everyone else. And, and Whatever. It, it doesn't matter. I, I tweeted over and over again, poor Ted. I hate that he's from Texas. I feel so poorly represented uh, by poor Ted. But at the end of the day, he'll be saying Justice Jackson. And so I am proud of her. Uh, she, she was ready for this. She is ready for this. And um, she will rise. Okay. Well, you know, every single experience, every part of Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's background has led to this experience over the past three days. She's been prepared because she was born a black child, a black female child. She became a black teenage girl, a young black woman, and she's been a black woman professional lawyer for the past decades, several decades. So all of her experience, all of her background, all of her hard work, all of her dedication, all of her tenacity, all of her blood, sweat, and tears, which we know there has been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, has led to this moment in her life. She was prepared. She was brilliant. She fought back when she needed to fight back. When they tried to take her off her game, she came back into her lane. She followed the rule of the law. She followed the Constitution. She let them know exactly what type of justice of the U.S. Supreme Court she's going to be. And she did it with a great deal of pride, a great deal of class and grace, much more than, quite frankly, the senators who consistently attacked her with misinformation, disinformation, and in some instances, flat out lies at these hearings. It was really disgraceful, but it reeked of desperation because when you have someone who is so eminently qualified as judge, soon to be Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, you've got to just pull the All right. Speaking of pulling, we got to pull the cord on this show. Uh, we're out of time here. You can support the African History Network. We're celebrating our 12th year anniversary of me broadcasting the African History Network show. Uh, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App and PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have the information right on the uh, homepage of our website. I first started broadcasting the African History Network show on March 10th. 2010 it's been 12 years it's been a fantastic journey we couldn't do this without you also you can register for the online courses i teach on saturdays and sundays ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade what they didn't teach you in school and from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power 1865 to 1968 and my new class great african women in history the mothers of civilization remember right now is correct your own behavior it's not over till we win wakanda forever and we'll talk to you next time peace Okay, stand by. Those watching on Facebook and YouTube, stand by. We're only on 9, 10 for two hours. Okay, how's everybody doing? Um, so uh, we'll be rebroadcasting uh, the shows I did this past week, uh, the coverage uh, th th that we did, the analysis dealing with the confirmation hearings. We're going to be rebroadcasting those uh, all week. Um, I'm going to post information here. Now, we're we're on uh, Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. midnight. So uh, call in there. Tuesday, uh, Sundays, we have uh, a jam packed show. I'm on for two hours Sundays, but we have a jam packed show. So sorry we couldn't get to the callers, but you can call back uh, tomorrow night. All right. 
Here's the information for uh, Cash App. If you like this type of work, if you learn from the African History Network show, you know, we don't deal with a whole lot of gossip and a bunch of simple Simon ass nonsense. We don't do that here. You can support us. Uh, this helps us keep doing the broadcast, stay on the air, keep doing the research, etc. cetera. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App and through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Okay. And then we also have the information dealing with uh, uh, the um, online courses that I teach also. Okay. And you can use this information with your children as well. I would say the information is uh, PG-13. Um, and as soon as you register, you can uh, watch the classes we did this, this weekend also. Okay. So we have the information here. We'll post this here for the uh, online classes also. All right, we have to get out of here. Remember, the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's correct wrong behavior. If you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization, email me at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com, ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com, or the ahnshow at gmail.com, the ahnshow at gmail.com. If you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization. Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Peace. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. Jeanette Davis is a well-established author with six published books. Black Survival in White America from Past History to the Next Century was published in 1995, and it delves into the history of African Americans before slavery up to contemporary times. The Great Divide Between Blacks and Whites was released in 2008, and her autobiography, Black Just Like My Mama, was published in 2010. Soulful Journey, The Business of Beings, was released in December 2021 and her two latest books, Echoes from the Heart, Love Throws Poetry, and Master Being Human were both published in January of 2022. Jeanette Davis' writings delve deeply into the psyche of black people from ancient to contemporary times. She cuts no corners and leaves no stones unturned in relating truth, letting the chips fall where they may on both African and European doorsteps. Order Jeanette Davis' books today at Amazon.com. Search for Jeanette Davis and get to know her work today. What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skin care and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com.